Praise the Lord, beautiful and lovely people. We are excited to bring church right at your doorstep, right in your sitting room, wherever you are. We are very excited to be fellowshipping with you and ministering to you here at Dominion Church International Mbuya. Check our Facebook page, check our YouTube page at Dominion Church International Mbuya. Invite a friend, tell them that Dominion Church is right here for you. My name is Akia Anna Mary, and I will take us through our weekly program. Program. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m., we are here for our Bible study, learning about the book of Revelation with our resident pastor, Pastor John Bazira. Every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m., we are here with our pastors in our lunch hour revival service. You do not want to miss. We are praying for you, believing God for you. We are worshiping together and glorifying the King of Kings. And every Sunday, like it is this Sunday, we have exciting, powerful, packed things for you. We have an exciting poem for you. The power packed word you do not want to miss. Invite a friend. Tell them their miracle is just right here as they watch this service. My name is Akia Anna Mary. I remind us to share the link. Tell a friend to tell a friend that Dominion Church International is the place for you. Now, do not forget to give. Remember, giving is better than receiving. When you give, you are sowing a seed into your future. Get excited as we invite Elisha to take us through the poem. And immediately after that, we'll have our praise and worship session from the Dominion Praise Ministries. We love you so much. Enjoy your service. Looking up into the sky, searching in bright, dawn in dark times, releasing light peacefully to the earth. Oh, what kind of wisdom in manifest? What is on my mind is a promise, saying, peace, be still. This, the promise, keeps running through my thoughts, living memories of how peace reigns within. Causing a smile on my face endlessly as the eagles sprout their wings into the sky. Getting to the knowledge of eternity, living there in Christ. In Him, the Prince of Peace, I only choose to believe. The promise is already there. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. The ultimate peace is rest in the Lord. Even up the mountains and down the valleys, this peace that surpasses human understanding will preserve you. There's nobody bigger, say. There's nobody bigger than you. Nobody can love me. Nobody hey. can love me like the way you do. Took away all the pains of my yesterday. Took away all the pain of my yesterday. You supply. You supply all my needs today. Hey. Hey. I don't want to go without giving you praise. There's no one that got for me. There's no one that got for me. Say my soul got me home.
Muka mugula mubwange Yesu ye kaye ando kola Now we're in Zanga Muka mugula mubwange Yesu ye kaye ando kola Zeka mwereze says that you were bought by a price and you belong to God. Hallelujah. You are his child. The Bible says that as many as believed they were given the right to become the children of God. And now you are God's belonging. You belong unto the most high God. You belong unto the most greatest and powerful power that has ever lived. And so I want you to lift up your hands and just declare and say that I belong to Jesus. I am for God. I am a heir in this kingdom. We are joined held with Christ Jesus. We have rights in the kingdom of God because we belong to him. Somebody lift up your praise in this place. Somebody lift up your worship in this place. Let me hear the sound of praise in this place. Let me hear sound of declaration in this place. Yeah. Whoa, Salaba Kora Levalosa. Lord, we believe you're in this place. Lord, we believe that we belong to you. We belong, we belong to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, God. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lord, I belong, Lord, I belong to you. And that makes me happy, Lord. That makes me glad. Now let's call it his name. Say, Jesus. Savior. Savior, my life belongs, my life belongs to you. Somebody just lift up your hands and raise your voice and say, Master, Master you're my redeemer. redeemer. 
Now let's declare and say, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Only you, Jesus. I'm yours. Nobody else. time and everybody say Jesus Savior lift up your hands and raise your voice and tell him I surrender. I surrender. Ha. I surrender my body as a living sacrifice. I surrender. I surrender. To no other God, to no other man, only you, Lord. I surrender. So, Lord, Lord, Three body harmony. your voice and surrender to the most high because he has your life in his hands he has your plans in his hands I surrender Myself unto you and ask you to use me. Whatever you ask me, whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, Lord, I belong to you. I belong to you. Yes, 
Yeah, mine. 
Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. You are worthy of the honor, you are worthy of the glory. There is none like you. Only you deserve the praise. Only you deserve the honor. Only you deserve the glory. Spirit of the living God, have your way today. Come, do your will in our midst today. And we pledge, Lord, to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are taking our reading today from the book of First Kings. Chapter 21, from verse 1 to verse 4. The Bible says, and it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house, sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreites had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give to you the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down on his bed and turned away his face. And he would eat no food. Brethren, we live at a time where everything seems to be going at whatever price. We are at a time where it seems that there is a price for anything. And even when it comes to our heritage, we come to a point where many of us think because we are in a highly commercialized environment, anything can go. You see, when we talk about heritage, for many of us, what we think it is just that something that is passed down from one generation to another. And for the unsaved, it can be material. It is possessions. It is material stuff that is handed down. But when it comes to the family of God, there is something more. There is a spiritual heritage 
There is the gospel that has been handed down. There are principles that have moved from generation to generation and have come to us. And we are custodians of these principles. We are the carriers of this light. We are the bearers of this truth. And if we sell out, then we have nothing to pass on to the next generation. I fear for the time that we're living in. When Timothy, when Paul was writing to Timothy, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, he tells him that I recall to remembrance the genuine faith that was in you, Timothy, which first dwelt in your grandmother, Lois, and was with your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded that the same is with you. What does he see here? There is a passing down of the torch of faith. And later we see him again right to Timothy. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Where he says the things you have heard me speak among many witnesses commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Basically saying this cannot end with you. The torch has to be passed on from one generation to another. But what do we see today? Today, we have a battle raging over which heritage will be passed on. Because many today are receiving a corrupt heritage from the devil and his agents and his systems. From our peers and from the media. And we are passing on this corruption to the next generation. Jesus narrated a parable in the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 25 and there he said when he's narrating the parable of the tears in the 25th verse he says that while men slept the enemy came and saw tears among the wheat and he went his way now the enemy knew something that if he can only plant the tears among the wheat the wheat and the tears are going to come up together and what you will have it will impact the harvest that you will get the same situation even today many are asleep and the enemy is sowing tears. So we need to come to a point in our lives where we have an emphatic message for those that want to exchange that which we have received and say no deal. This is not for sale. The Bible tells us looked at the field that was next to his palace. He desired that this field of this vineyard be given to him. And in exchange, he had a proposal. He said, because it is next to my palace, and because I want to to plant vegetables in it, I have a deal I have. 
I have a deal for you, Naboth. Naboth, you not change your color. Get out of It is Naboth. Nakama Naboth. I want you to give me that fear. And in exchange, I will give you a better vineyard. Or if that is not what you would prefer, I am going to give you money's worth of that fear. And Naboth turned to her husband and said, no deal. This field is not for sale. Why not for sale? This looks like such a generous offer. But you see, there is something that... Naboth understood that land was not only a source of financial security, but this land was connected to family. All the land belonged to God. And when you read number 36 to verse 7, God had instructed that this inheritance that he had given to each tribe of Israel should never be changed from one hand to another tribe. So if you were hard out and you needed to sell this land, you needed to look for a kinsman redeemer. Someone from your tribe. It was him that you would sell this land. And after 50 years, this land would have to come back to this family. Why? Because this was connected to heritage. Naboth had a very simple response. He told Ahab, the Lord forbid that I give the inheritance of my father to you. Why such a response? What is the message for us today? You see, there are some people today that will try to take away what has been given to us. When they come to you with offers, when they come to you with ideas, when they come to you with proposals, we need to be able to stare them in the face and saying no deal. This, this is not for sale. As saints of God, we need to take an inventory of the gifts that we have been freely given by the Lord. We need to be able to take an inventory of what God Christ has wrought for us by his life, death, and resurrection. We need to hold precious what we have been given and ensure that we pass this on to the next generation. For example, our salvation. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. It is not of works. So if somebody is proposing any other salvation, if someone is proposing any other way, that is not Jesus Christ. We need to be able to point out to him that he alone is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through him. We need to be able to stand and declare according to Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 12 that nor is there any other salvation in any other for there is no other name given in heaven among men by which we must be saved. 
kuwa. We need to be very emphatic. To tell them that all have seen and come short of the glory of God. As it is written in the word of God. In the book of Romans chapter 3 and verses 23. And the Bible goes on to tell us. That the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ. We need to tell them. That there is only one mediator. Between men and God. That is the man Jesus Christ. We need to stand and fight. And tell them. That this is the only way. By which men will be saved. And we need to guard this heritage. By proclaiming it. According to Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For the gospel. Is the power of God unto salvation of men. Praise be to God. We need to guard the authority of scripture. Today there are so many books going around. We are living in a generation of self-help. Do-it-yourself methodologies. So many proposals are coming forward with the attention of trying to water down the gospel. With the attention of the intention of trying to bring to us another gospel that we are not given. Many today are taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and they are treating it like a buffet. You see, when you get to a buffet, you have so many dishes lined up. And then you begin to cherry pick what you want to eat. You begin to pick. You begin to pick. One by one. This one, no, no, no. This one, a lot of fat. This is red meat. That's not the way we want to treat the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 16 that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is not some scripture. It is all scripture. And it is profitable for doctrine. That means it is profitable for teaching. For Proof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. This book is not for you to cherry pick. This book is the word of God. The Bible tells us further in Hebrews Chapter 4 and verse 12. That this book is living. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. Herein is the life. Herein is the manual that we need to hold on to. We need to take it as whole. We cannot just select what we want. We need to take the word as the instruction from above. For the Bible tells us in 2 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 4, that through these exceedingly great promises, we become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world. Through last, through this book, we need to tell those that come to us with an proposal that the word of God is still inerrant. The word of God is infallible. The word of God is inspired. We need to guard the heritage of the authority of scripture. Number one, by reading it. Number two, by proclaiming it. Number three, by living it day after Today. David declared that the word of God is the lamp 
unto my feet and the light unto my path. Saints of God, we need to come to that point that when a proposition to change the Bible, any proposition to provide another book, any proposition to tell us that tradition and authority of the Bible are both inspired. We need to come and say, no, 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 no. This is what has been handed down to us. We cannot change it for anything else. There is no deal here. This gospel is not for sale. Number three, we need to come to a point of separation. For many times today, both within the churches and outside them, there are efforts being made to bring down the walls so that there is accommodation. But we need to understand who we are and what our calling is in this world. Jesus put it so plainly according to Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to verse 16 he turned to the disciples while he seated on the mount and told them you are the salt of the earth he did not tell them you will be the salt of the earth when you do something he didn't tell them you should be the salt of the earth no 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 no, no, no. he told them like he's telling you today you are the salt of the earth. The implication of that is you are the salt and the rest are not. The implication of that is that you have a mandate to preserve. You have a mandate to purify. You have a mandate to savor, to bring flavor wherever you are. You are a change agent. And that is what has been handed to you as the mandate from heaven. No wonder everyone that surrenders their life to Jesus Christ receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The reason you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that you are now set apart. You are now separated. Who you were is not who you are right now. Yes, some things may not have aligned to what you believe. Some things may not have aligned to what your aspirations are. Some things may not have aligned to what your hope is. But there is this assurance that right now, you are the soul of the earth. And the Bible goes on to tell us. He not only tells them you are the sword. He goes further to tell them that you are the light of the world. A city that is put up on a hill cannot be hidden. He's telling them something here. He's telling you something. You have been put up on the lampstand so that you shine forth your life that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Your life needs to testify of this. And if anyone comes to you to tell you, no, 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 no. You see, we need to blend in. You see, we need to be part of it. You you need to stand out and say, I am the light and not the darkness. I come here to provide influence. We need to get to that place where the abiding presence of the Holy Ghost becomes the separator between who we are, between the heritage that we have. We need to stop talking about it and begin to be. Praise be to God. The time has come, saints of God, for us to recognize what we have received. There is a reason why when you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in you to 
Because he dwells in you. And he is holy. It is a calling for every one of us. To be as holy. Even as he is holy. This is your heritage. You cannot trade it for anything. Else. It's not worth it. There is no money that can buy it. You cannot exchange it for something. Else. You cannot relate it to anything anyone can give you. This has been handed to you by your heavenly Father. And the next generation owes it to you. You cannot sell out now. Because if you sell out now, you have nothing to give the next generation. Your message should be clear. There is no deal here. This is not for sale. Father, in the name of Jesus, many have been the temptations that have come out. Many have been the proposals that have come out. Many have been the ideas that we have entertained. But we come before you, Heavenly Father. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. We come before you, Heavenly Father. Empty handed. Many have been the ideas that we have welcomed. Riches proposed glory and power. There was plenty of glory to see. But all the glory, all the money has turned out to be a sorry God. King of kings, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask, oh Lord, where we have grieved your spirit. Where we have quenched you, dear Holy Spirit. Forgive us, Lord. Break us once again, Lord. Mold us once again, Lord. Fill us once again, Lord. And use us once again. That these lips will have only and only one word. When such an idea comes our way, no deal. This is not for sale. If you have never given your life to Jesus, you are already sold out to the devil. But there is hope for you today. Jesus is the way. Today, you can invite him in your life. Right now, where you are, you can call on him and say, I come to you. Come into my life. Save me. Purify my heart. Write my name in the book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live for you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Right now, you have, if you have said these words from the bottom of your heart, you have been wonderfully saved. There is that number on the screen. Please call it. You will receive instruction on the steps that you need to take to leave this world, to live in this world, not as a sell out to the devil, but with a life sold out to God. For those of you that have tithes and offerings to give. The number is on your screen. You can send in your contribution to support the ministry, to promote the work of God, to ensure that we take this message to the ends of the world. God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to us. Shalom.